jelly rolls are really popular in the quilt world right now. I went on to Missouri Star Quilts and bought me a couple of jelly rolls and I'm going to make an art quilt with them. I'd love to teach you how. So I want to make a sunflower art quilt and I bought this jelly roll which is a Prisma Dyes Lava Flow roll and it's by Artisan Batiks. Then I also wanted greens for the, the stems and the leaves and so I bought this is a Glorious Greens by Island Batiks and they're just beautiful. I'm so excited to try these. You will also need some fun bright blue background. This is about 17 inches by 24 inches. You will need a pattern which you can go onto my website and get this as a free download and print it out on your printer. It'll print out in four sheets, you tape it together and you're all ready to go and to trace it onto some freezer paper. So you want some freezer paper. Um, you will also want some scissors. You will want a craft blade. I have two different styles. These are ceramic blades that do not cut you, but they cut the paper really well and they don't cut your fabric. You can get one that is um, ergonomic and you can use it. Oh, I did that upside down. You can use it like that. I really like this little pen style. You also need a little iron. You can use a regular size iron. I prefer these small irons. I, you can get this on Missouri Star as well. You will want a large Teflon pressing sheet. I really love this big one. This one is like 18 by 24 inches. Missouri Star has one that's an 18 by 20 inches. Those, the, that's a really good size to have because we're gonna pre-fuse our strips using this. Um, you'll also want an ironing surface and a, when we get to the middle of our sunflower, we're going to do a different kind of technique and you'll want a fat quarter of like orange or yellow. I prefer orange. So I picked a fun medium toned orange. You'll want a fat quarter for that. Other than that, I think we're ready to go. Okay. So this is my yellow jelly roll and it goes to this beautiful burgundy. I picked out, let's see, I just seven colors so far of the colors I like that I think look like a sunflower. And then I got to this really orange sherbet colors and I don't want them. So I'm actually picking out one, two, three, four, five colors and discarding them. Like we'll use them for another project, I'm sure, but I'm literally picking out all these colors and saving them for later. I'm just gonna set them aside. Also, I think this is a really great color for a shadow. So I'm gonna keep, what I've done is I've kept one strip. I, each one of these has given me, oh, well, this is two different colors. I didn't realize that. This is a, there's a burgundy and more of a brick red color. So I think I'm gonna go with this very last brick red color. Doesn't matter. You can really pick whatever colors you want out of this jelly roll. There's so many pretty colors and you can, you can decide. But I'm, with each of the colors, I've taken one strip and it's folded over because these are these jelly roll strips are two and a half inches wide by 44 inches long. And I don't think we're gonna need that much fabric. So these jelly rolls can do lots of projects when you're doing a small art quilt. So I literally cut it at the fold and I'm saving one strip. And that's what I've done with all of these seven yellow colors. And I've also done that with my greens. So this is my background. And what we want to do doing this technique, you can do it another way if you want. Um, I've done this a collage style way as well, but this time I'm doing it this technique that I really love come to love. So I have my hot iron and my free, I traced the pattern onto freezer paper and you want a nice hot iron for freezer paper, okay? Or it just does not melt that wax and stick. And you're gonna need some fusible webbing. I like Misty Fuse. You can use other types, but this is the type that I prefer. It is just my favorite. It is so easy to work with. Um, I have cut it the size of my pressing sheet. So that's pretty much gonna like, the bigger the pressing sheet, Teflon sheet, the easier it is to use this, um, to do this, style of pre-fusing your fabrics. Um, and some, some of the things that I do with this technique, I don't pre-fuse my fabrics, but for this one I am because I want to just be able to go fast. <laughs> 
So now I have my, my Misty Fuse down and I'm going to start laying my strips. The Misty Fuse is overhanging the edge because it's wider. I could trim it down, but I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. I'm going to leave it like that because I'm not going to press. It's, it's the, this pressing sheet is the size of my ironing surface, this padded ironing surface that I have here. So I'm not worried about getting the Misty Fuse onto that surface because the pressing sheet's the same size. So I think we're going to be just fine. So I cut the Misty Fuse to the size of the pressing sheet. And I laid down my first strip here. And then I'm going to lay down the next one right next to it. Just really snug. Okay. Um, no room in between. Not overlapping necessarily, but just right on it, right next to it. So now we can pull this back and like this strip is pulling away, totally okay. I would prefer that because then when we go to cut it um, into, I only need certain colors in each piece. I don't need like three colors. And if it's ripping, I may just like down here where I didn't iron, I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. And you can see that some of my Misty Fuse, I don't know if you can see that, but some of my, my Misty Fuse ends about here. So I have this much that doesn't have any. I can take a scrap of Misty Fuse and put it there and press it, or I could just cut it off. I'm going to keep pulling these off of our Teflon pressing sheet, making sure that they're pressed well down. Of course, the middle is pressed well. It always tends to do that. It's your edges that we tend to have a hard time. And see, I can now just pull that right off. And at the bottom where it didn't get ironed, it, it rips still, but it will rip unevenly. So I'm just going to, you can't see that probably, but I'm going to cut it like that. So make sure you press it long enough that when you go to pull it apart, it doesn't do what I'm doing here. It, this strip was pull, was difficult to pull and it was stretching the Misty Fuse so that it pulls it away from the fabric. So just go over it and iron it really well. You can't over iron this. Then when you pull it away, it will be like a perforated page and you can just pull it away quite easily. Now I'm going to measure out some more Misty Fuse to finish up the rest of my green strips that I want for my leaves. So I just did the same thing, pressing them next to each other enough that I can pull them apart like a perforated page. Now you have your pattern on your ironing surface. You're going to pick up the craft knife. I use a kind called Slice. Um, you can find these on Amazon and it's like a pen. You basically pick a shape and you trace it right on the line. You're then going to pick the color that you want um, and put it on your strip on a Teflon pressing sheet so you don't iron it to anything else. Press it with your small little iron. Make sure it's really nice and hot, that your iron's really hot. And then you're going to use your scissors to cut it out right along the sides of your freezer paper. And um, this is just really easy. And you can decide the color by looking at what I choose, or you can choose whatever color you want. Um, this is really <laughs> your choice. You can be creative. I did pick certain pieces to be um, a certain color because, like, the pieces that are really close to the middle, I chose, they were shadows, and so I did make those um, a darker color. Um, and some of the petals that are behind other petals, I did a little bit darker because it was like a shadow, but really there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to this one. I kind of just made it really like a collage effect. When you're placing it, your piece of fabric back down where it goes, um, I use these little pointed tweezers to pull up the edges of the freezer paper and tuck the fabric underneath because 
even though I cut it right along the edge of my freezer paper, a lot of times my fabric is just slightly larger. And that's okay, but you just don't want to, you don't want to glue your freezer paper down underneath that fabric. Or when you go to pull everything else off, your other pieces of freezer paper, they'll, they'll pull your fabric off too. So I'm just doing it here with the second piece as well and um, picked out a color a little bit different. I don't, I didn't like to use the same color right next to it. I wanted to use different colors next to it to give it more variety, but it's really um, totally up to you. This is, this is your quilt. So once again, cutting it out right along the edge of the freezer paper, not cutting through the freezer paper, but just right along the edge. So it doesn't dull your fabric scissors and then um, placing it back in the hole and it, the shape shows you right where it needs to go. So it helps you be just really nice and precise and it's super easy. So you'll notice this piece right here has a little petal that was supposed to be in front of it, but I decided I wanted to take that out. So it's okay to just combine it with the other petal next to it. And I just cut one piece and I left it that way just to simplify the pattern a little bit more. It's totally okay to do that. Feel free to take out another petal or another line if you feel like this is too much detail for you. You can make it more simple if you'd like. Now that we're all done with our finished quilt, I love how it turned out. The middle, uh, if you're interested in knowing how to do this bubble technique, check out our video link in the description below. I already made a video on that a while ago and it's super fun, easy. You need a fat quarter and some fusible interfacing and this really cool cooling rack. So you're gonna take that fat quarter that we talked about and you're going to cut it two inches larger in diameter than the pattern that you have on the center of your sunflower. And after you do this technique, you're going to straight use a straight pin and pin it to the middle of your sunflower. And then I just straight stitched around the edges. Um, if there was any little pieces or bubbles that stuck out, I used my stiletto to kind of poke the edge under where I wanted it to keep it more smooth. And that's it. So really easy to do. If you don't want this bubble texture technique, you can totally just do one round a, a circle of uh, whatever fabric color you want for the middle and just leave it plain and you can totally do that too. Adding some really fun uh, free motion quilting in there would, would add a lot to it as well. If you want to know how to free motion quilt it, stay tuned. We'll have a video on that coming. I had a lot of jelly roll fabric strips left over. So I'm going to do some more projects with them. They, I thought they were really great because a lot of the projects I do have a lot of little pieces and lots of little colors. So it was really handy to have. I'm not worried about using them up. Um, if you're concerned, um, there are things called charm packs and I got this at Missouri Star as well. Um, and it's like a lot less because you get less fabric. But I think even with this much fabric, I wouldn't have used it all on this project. This, this doesn't take a lot. So this is another option. I did not find one that had oranges and reds in it. So I just, this has had various yellows and that would still be really cute. Remember, you can do this and we hope you join us for our next video. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. For more like it, just hit that subscribe button below and check out the rest of our YouTube channel. You'll also find videos and tutorials on everything art quilts, whether you're just beginning or learning to enhance your skill.